And the chair will now recognize the gentlewoman from Florida, Ms. Kat Kamek, for three minutes. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to all of my colleagues on this wonderful, wonderful committee. Your work is crucial in charting a path towards fiscal sanity for our nation, so I thank you in advance for your work. Now, as we speak, the United States national debt is barreling towards $34 trillion. Our window to restore common sense to our federal budget is slowly closing, and we must act before our kids and grandkids pay the price for our government's abdication of fiscal responsibility. Now, as one of the youngest members serving in the House of Representatives today, I am infuriated. I am disappointed. I am very frustrated. The fiscal sins that have been committed in the halls today and continue on are going to be paid by me, by my peers, by my generation. It is millennials and Gen Zs that will pay the steep price for the lack of courage displayed by members of this chamber. Continuing resolutions are nothing more than lazy rubber stamps of previous year's spending and priorities that do nothing to course correct the devastating path that we are on. Of course, no discussion about our nation's fiscal health is serious unless we address the drivers of our debt, namely mandatory spending, which as you and everyone in this uh, room knows is on autopilot. Without reforms immediately, we will never be able to honor the commitments made by this government to our seniors and those most vulnerable. It is a conversation that is a much longer one, but a critical one. That being said, I'd like to highlight a handful of proposals that we could implement immediately that would help restore our nation's fiscal health. One, creating and implementing a structured national debt repayment plan. Two, realigning our budgeting process to start from zero, or as we all know it, zero-based budgeting. Three, including CBO scores on regulatory costs before they are implemented, not when they come off the books. And four, passing a balanced budget amendment. So first, a structured debt repayment plan would be a crucial step in tackling the national debt in a meaningful and intentional way. We can no longer leave this issue to chance and just hope it goes away. Eliminating the deficit and balancing the budget would be obviously the first step, but executing the concept of a long-term structured debt repayment plan is largely ignored and could be the trick to getting us back on track. Two variations of this proposal exist, but one that seems to work the easiest and make the most sense would be to peg principal payments of our national debt to a percentage of the GDP. This would allow for payments to ebb and flow amongst the cyclical nature of our economy and our revenues. My belief is that these payments would not be suggestions, but should be made mandatory, as we can no longer treat the fiscal health of our nation as a discretionary issue. Only under circumstances such as economic crisis or a declaration of war could these payments be waived. These waivers would be congressionally authorized and only by a supermajority of the People's House. Furthermore, realigning the budgeting process from our current status quo of year-to-year -year budgeting to a zero-based budgeting process is a no-brainer. Every year, we approach this appropriation process assuming that the previous year's funding levels are adequate and substantiated. We know that to be false. Including CBO scores on regulations is also a common, step, a common sense step. Regulations have a $2 trillion annual impact on our economy in enforcement and compliance costs alone. We have no actual figures that demonstrate what the government pays in these enforcement costs on regulations. In fact, when I spoke with the CBO director, he said that they only score regulations when they come off the books as a cost savings, but no mechanism has been in place when they go on the books. And lastly, as I mentioned before, we should pass a balanced budget amendment. In Congress, we hold the power of the purse. And like any business, we must maintain a balance, a balance sheet where our costs do not exceed our revenues. We will have no path forward in paying down our national debt if we do not make these reforms now. We cannot garnish the wages of our children and our grandchildren. We have to take action immediately. I appreciate your work and this committee's work in exploring the ways that we can change the course of our budgetary process for the better and with the American taxpayers in mind first. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kamek.